two, one. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Cassandra Lunch number 67. Oh, I can share my camera too, so you guys see my face. Might help. Uh, welcome to Cassandra Lunch number 67. Today we have a junior engineer to not here, uh, Nikita, presenting on moving data from Cassandra to Datastax Astra. And the organizers for this event are Raul Singh, Arpan Patel, and myself. We are always looking for speakers and sponsors. So if, if there's a technology you want uh, surrounding Cassandra that you would like to learn and then present on, um, or you know uh, an expert who uh, wants, to, wants to help like make a name for themselves and then and increase their brand, uh, certainly have them reach out to us so we can have them present here. Um, our emails were listed below there. We are part of a larger community, Data Community DC. Um, this is an inclusive environment. So uh, regardless of race, gender, sexual orientation, everyone's welcome here and we expect uh, respect to be given to um, all protected classes. You can find out more about Data Community DC at their blog, as well as other events uh, from the community uh, listed there on that link. What we cover here is everything related to Cassandra. So uh, this could be things from Spark to Kafka, um, Scylla, every, everything that uh, Cassandra and the ecosystem, like all, all surrounding stuff we kind of cover here. Uh, at this point in the presentation, we do want to allow, uh, could we mute? Is that Lucy, or could you mute yourself? Um, unless you want to introduce yourself, because this is the point. <laughs> Any new uh, comers to this talk, uh, we do like to encourage to say hi, what you do with Cassandra, um, and introduce yourself. All right, we'll move on then. Group roles, if you have a question, uh, ask it. This is meant to be somewhat of a discussion. So also you can contribute what you know. Nikita will have his own set of rules for how he would like uh, questions to be answered, whether that be in the chat or at the end of the presentation. So he'll, he'll let us know. And again, this is meant to be um, kind of knowledge sharing. So if you have a clarifying point on a particular uh, thing in the presentation, be sure to uh, let us know. Here to not, we deal with Cassandra frequently. We deal with uh, real-time data platforms and architecture for companies. And Datastax is a partner with us, as well as George Washington University, um, some of the other uh, program sponsors that have been with us. Uh, if sponsoring an event like this is something you're interested in, you could get advertised here as well. And some of the organizational sponsors at this point in the introduction, if anyone has any upcoming jobs, meetups, hackathons, uh, anything of that nature, uh, this is an opportunity for you to kind of advertise that. Doesn't seem like it, so we'll move on. Uh, one of our own announcements, we are hiring for full or part-time positions as data platform operators, engineers, and architects. This is 100% remote or can be. Um, you can find out more at careers.anot.us. Some upcoming topics we have uh, next week, we'll be going over Datastacks Apache Kafka Connector. Um, in the sister lunch to this, Data Engineers Lunch, which takes place on Mondays at uh, noon Eastern time, uh, we'll be going over streaming real time versus batch for ETL. And then the subsequent Cassandra lunch is gonna be going over Kate Cassandra. Um, and you can find out all of our events. We have some stuff coming up with data stacks as well. Uh, how to migrate uh, your database to the cloud. Um, those, those events are listed on not.us slash events. All of these videos are recorded and posted to YouTube, which we are now currently live streaming to. So. Um, you could join us on YouTube moving forward in the future as well. Um, and if there's any topics you're interested in, definitely check back at, with Cassandra.lunch um, playlist on YouTube because um, you may find what you're looking for there. 
Uh, we have a lot of content now, now stacked up there. And Cassandra Link is your number one resource for Cassandra related articles. This is hand curated by Raul Singh. So um, everything here is, is really, it's just a great knowledge base for anything surrounding Cassandra. You can see there's topics such as Spark and Kafka there as well. And with that, I will pass it off to Nikita. All right. Uh, thanks for the intro, Josh. Let me, let me share screen here. Uh, is it working, not working? Yeah, I can see it. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, as Josh mentioned, uh, today I'm going to be talking a little bit about how to move data from Cassandra to Datastax Astra, uh, in particular using an open source tool uh, called DS Bulk. Uh, there are other ways to go about doing this. So there are many, many ways to go about doing this, I'm sure, but today we'll be focusing on uh, basic usage of DS Bulk. So, first, a little bit about Cassandra. In case you don't know too much about it, uh, Apache Cassandra is an open source distributed NoSQL database designed to handle large volumes of data across multiple different servers. Uh, and part of what makes Cassandra really cool is the Cassandra clusters can be upgraded by either improving hardware on current nodes, which is what we refer to as vertical scalability, or adding more nodes, which is what we refer to as horizontal scalability. And horizontal scalability is part of why Cassandra is so powerful. Uh, because you can add a bunch of cheap machines to improve a cluster's performance, as opposed to being forced to upgrade the like singular machine that uh, some other databases run on. And uh, one thing to note is that the uh, demo I'll be going over today uh, is using open source Cassandra. Uh, I believe it's it should work identically if you decide to use uh, Datastax Enterprise version of Cassandra. Sorry about that. All right. So next I'll talk a little bit about uh, Datastax Astra and what Astra is. Uh, so I have a link to their website. And uh, Datastax Astra is a fully managed serverless database built on Apache Cassandra provided by Datastax. Uh, some features that make uh, Astra pretty cool are uh, that Astra now has Stargate APIs which makes it easy for developers to use a Cassandra-based database like Astra to work with data without uh, having uh, very much knowledge of CQL at all. Uh, there's, well, they call it zero lock-in, but basically uh, when you create a, an Astra database, you can choose where it's hosted. Uh, currently they have three options being AWS, GCP, and Azure, uh, and still maintain compatibility with open source Cassandra. Uh, global scale, uh, data replication across multiple data centers, availability zones in multiple regions. Uh, additionally, allows the user to scale an Astra database up to multiple petabytes of data without impacting speed or performance significantly. And Astra is also really cool because the free plan uh, lets you use 80 gigabytes of storage and 20 million read write operations uh, every month uh, completely for free, which is pretty neat. So now I'm going to start talking about DS Bulk, which is what we'll be demoing shortly. Uh, so DS Bulk is the Datastax bulk loader for Apache Cassandra. Uh, it's an open source software, and it's used to load, uh, load or unload CSV or JSON data in and out of uh, supported databases. Uh, the databases that DS Bulk currently supports are Datastax Astra Cloud Database, uh, Datastax Enterprise, DSE, uh, 4.7 and later, and open source Apache Cassandra 2.1 and later. Uh, more info about DS Bulk, along with documentation, can be found at that URL. And there's also a GitHub repository for the project as it's open source. So, Today, we're going to be using three separate DS Bulk commands, um, first of which is DS Bulk load. Uh, as the name may suggest, this command is used to load data into a Cassandra slash Astra database without a configuration file. 
uh, note that after we type in DS bulk load, then we're going to have to put in a bunch of extra parameters uh, that we'll talk about uh, in a second. Uh, the second command we'll be going over is DS bulk unload. Uh, this command is used to unload data from a Cassandra Astro database without a configuration file into either a CSV or a JSON file. Uh, note that necessary parameters will have to be passed in as well. And finally, we'll be going over DS bulk count, uh, which uh, is a command used to return information about loaded data in a Cassandra slash Astro database. Like for example, basic functionality is to count the number of rows in a table. So a few of the different flags that we'll be using as part of our DS bulk uh, terminal commands, uh, first being minus K, uh, which is for key space, uh, minus T for table, uh, minus B will be a local or will be a link to our uh, secure connect bundle. So if you ever use Astra, or I guess if you haven't used Astra, then after you create a database, uh, one way to connect to it is to download something called the Secure Connect Bundle. And so we'll be using that today. Uh, then we have the minus U and minus P flags, which are for username and password to the database. Uh, since a recent Astra update, uh, at some point earlier uh, this year in 2021, uh, you need to use uh, a client ID and a client secret instead of a username and password here. So I believe that Astro databases don't have a user password anymore, and you have to access them using this client ID and client secret. But I'll briefly mention how to generate those uh, in Astro. And uh, finally, we have the minus URL flag, which is a URL from where to pull the CSV or JSON file from, or a local directory from for where to either unload the data or where to load the data from. So it doesn't have to necessarily be uh, online. All right. Uh, so short little uh, intro to what we're going to be going over today. Uh, we'll be going through four main processes using DS bulk. Uh, we're going to be loading a CSV file that's hosted online into a locally running Cassandra database. Then we're going to be loading a CSV hosted online straight into Astra. Uh, then we're going to be unloading from local Cassandra to a CSV file on our machine. And finally, we're going to be loading from that CSV file uh, into Astra. And so that's sort of our process here of uh, transferring data using DS bulk uh, from local Cassandra, or could be Cassandra hosted somewhere else. Uh, uh, but to move data from Cassandra to Astra, we first move it to our machine, and then we move from a machine to Astra. So a few minutes before this started, I made sure to run a local Cassandra database whose container name is my Cassandra. And there, 30 minutes ago, it's running. And then... As I'd mentioned previously, uh, in order to use uh, Datastax's uh, Astra now, uh, you don't have a username and a password for your database anymore. You need to generate a, a client ID and a client secret key. And so to do this, for example, I have my database right here. It's called test database three. Uh, very convenient number of reads and writes. <laughs> but and so if I press the three little dots to the right of my database from the main Astra uh, dashboard, there's a button here that says generate a token. So if I go to generate a token, I can see some of the tokens that I've generated beforehand. And basically I select the role. So what kind of privileges I wanna give that uh, specific token. Uh, and then I can press the generate token button and you'll get a client ID a client secret key and some third value that we won't be using. And basically you need to write these values down because once you close the page, then they're gone forever. 
And if you forget what they are, then you'll have to regenerate a new token and then give the user uh, the new token that you generated. All right. So for the data that we're going to be using today, it is posted online at this link that will be included in the blog that corresponds to this presentation. But basically, this is what our data looks like. Uh, we have, I believe, 101 rows of data here. And it's just a couple UUIDs and then a number at the end with three columns. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to make sure that our uh, uh, database schema, or rather that our uh, schema for the table uh, exists in both Astra and in uh, our local Cassandra database. So we use a command. One second here. I lost it. One second. Uh, okay. So first we're going to run a command to run CQLSH on our local Cassandra database so we can create our schema. Uh, we create, uh, first we create a basic key space that I'll be calling test key space. And then we create our table, which will be, which will have two UUID fields and one integer field. So there's our table. All right. We check the, that it's empty and it is. So now we can move on to uh, making sure that we have the same thing uh, in Astra. So again, we go to Astra's main dashboard. We go to the connect button and then we open up the CQL console. From here, we run uh, similar commands to create uh, okay, so I already have this test key space created on uh, Astra, so that's why we're getting this unauthorized issue. Uh, let's see if we have the table. So we run command to create the table. And we run a command to see how many lines are in the table. So we see we have zero. And so now we exit CQLSH uh, from our or from the local Cassandra CQLSH. Clear the terminal. Next, we are going to use DS bulk to load uh, our data into our local Cassandra database. And so we're going to be using the load command uh, because you use the load command for when you're writing into a database and you use unload when you're reading from a database. And so um, I have DS bulk installed locally. Uh, you just install a little zip file, you unzip it, and then you point to the DS bulk uh, executable to use it. So here's my command for uh, this first example. Uh, let me make it a little bit larger. All right. So we see that we first pointed uh, where we have DS bulk locally. We write load. Then we put in a URL and we put in the URL to our data. Then we uh, put our um, the location of our Cassandra database. Uh, in this case, it's just localhost, then our key space, our table name, and then username and password, which I have it on default. So it's just Cassandra, Cassandra. One second. Okay. Uh, so we're going to run this. Hopefully it works. 
getting some kind of not errors but warnings but seems like we're good to go uh, it says that we've went through our 101 rows and have completed everything in less than one second and so now if we check our local cassandra database which we do with terminal we load up cqlsh again we select count star from our created table and we see that we have all 101 rows. And then just to show a few of these, a few of the rows to make sure that we actually put in our data, we see that we have some of our data rows. So that's the first basic command. Uh, uh, yeah. So now uh, we are going to load data into Astra using a very similar command, but for the username and password, we have to use our client ID and client secret, which I will be temporarily sharing here, but uh, five minutes after this presentation is over, those keys will not do anything. <laughs> and also, I believe you still need my secure connect bundle. So. <laughs> should be safe, hopefully. Uh, again, uh, in the same directory, uh, as I have my DS bulk folder, I also have my secure connect bundle. So that's how I'm gonna be pointing to the secure connect bundle. And so this command, again, we use load, we point to the URL that has our data. Uh, then we use the minus B flag and point to our secure connect bundle put in the same key space table and then we put in our secret keys all right so it seems like we've successfully done something but to make sure we're gonna check uh in astra first we get the count we see that we have 101 rows as we expect. And then we'll print some of the rows and we see we have the data that we expect. So now that we've sort of um, done this uh, process of being able to load data from a, a server or from a CSV file that's stored online, into both local Cassandra and Astra. Uh, we are going to now uh, basically do this process, but only upload the data into our local Cassandra and then see if we can use DS bulk to put the data into Astra. So first thing we're gonna do is uh, we're going to truncate our table, which I... Uh, Right, so we're going to kill our data in Astra. And then similarly, we're going to do the same thing for our local Cassandra. So we're starting both uh, tables empty using the truncate command. Uh, make sure that we've actually deleted our data, which we have in both Astra and local Cassandra. Then next, we are going to, uh, actually, we're gonna first load the data from online uh, back into local Cassandra because I don't have any other data in my local Cassandra database. So again, I use the same DS bulk load, load command that I'd mentioned before, loaded our data into local Cassandra. And now we're gonna do a two-step process. Number one, we're going to unload from local Cassandra to a CSV file. And then number two, we're gonna load into Astra from that CSV file, uh, both using DS bulk. So the first command uh, is going to be a DS bulk unload. I'm gonna clear the screen and paste the command. 
And so we see again, we link to our uh, DS bulk executable, then unload uh, for host. We have localhost. Uh, then we indicate the key space and the table name. And for the URL, we're now going to put in uh, a local directory. So in this case, we're going to use the directory called my data, which has to be an empty directory. So if it's a directory that already has something, then this is just going to error out and it's not going to do anything. So I'm going to run that. And now we see we have this directory called my data. We go into the directory and then we look at the data and we see that we've unloaded all 101 lines of our data into the CSV file. And yeah. And then finally, we are going to take this uh, CSV file and we are going to load that data into Astra, which will complete the process of using DS bulk to move data from uh, local Cassandra into Datastax Astra. So this time we're gonna be using the load command, but for the URL, uh, if it's slightly wrong, so I need to change the URL. All right, so for the URL, we link to our local directory, which uh, we called my data in the last step. And then again, we link our secure connect bundle, key space, table, definitions, and then our secret uh, client ID and client secret keys. Uh, oh. All right. Uh, <laughs> um, let's find out what happened here. <laughs> uh, we recently improved your database security to find out more and reconnect. Oh no. <laughs> um, doesn't seem like I'm using an absurd amount of any kind of requests. Uh, that's a little bit, that's a little bit odd. Uh, oh, let's try that one more time. And then if it doesn't work, then uh, we're going to pretend like it did work. <laughs> uh, so we're going to run the same command. Uh, nope, not happy. Not really sure what's going on here. <laughs> um, let me check that still have my token. This is the correct token or the correct client ID. Try one more time in case I missed the last character in this command. Again, we are loading from directory called my data. Can you look at the doc that the error mentions? Yeah, one second. Let me just try this one more time. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm assuming I might have just been missing the very last key or very last character of my uh, key. So now if we go into Astra again, we hit connect, open up the console, type in, and we see we have 101 rows and then to show that We've actually moved the correct data. We are going to list a few rows and we see we have the data that we expect. 
And yeah, uh, one final thing uh, I'll be showing an example of is the DS bulk count command. So now that we've loaded data into Astra, uh, sometimes we won't be dealing with very large uh, tables. And so to obtain some kind of like, uh, the example that I'll be showing only shows the number of rows uh, using DS bulk uh, in a table in Astra, but DS bulk count has a lot of other, uh, all, all sorts of interesting information that you can figure out about your table and the data in it. Uh, but you can read about that in the documentation if you're interested. So to use DS bulk count, uh, we link to our uh, DS bulk executable and then use the count command. Again, we link our secure connect bundle, uh, specify our key space and table, and then put in our username and password, which is the client ID and client secret keys. And so we run that. And we can see that it has counted 101 rows, which is exactly how many we expected. So we're good. And that's about all I have for uh, today's uh, demonstration. Uh, this will all be uh, included, or all the instructions uh, will be included in the blog post uh, that will be coming up shortly uh, to accompany this demo. And uh, for just more information on DS bulk, you can go to uh, some of these websites that I've linked here in, in this resources slide. Uh, in particular for DS bulk, you probably want to go to the documentation by data stacks. And yeah, if we don't have any questions, then that's all I have for today. I have a quick question. Mm -hmm. uh, so you mentioned that uh, while doing a DS bulk and load, uh, we specified a directory, but the directory has to be empty. For example, the directory that you used, my underscore data, it was empty, correct? Yeah. Uh, is that a mandatory requirement or uh, if, I mean, what I mean to say is um, uh, it just, it generates a default output.csv uh, because the directory is empty, if my understanding is correct. Uh, can we generate a customized named CSV? For example, even if we specify a directory which is empty, uh, does it have to be a default generated CSV in the empty directory or we can generate our own CSV as well? I don't know, but given the fact that DS bulk is a pretty comprehensive tool, I'm assuming that uh, if you run it like through a configuration file, or maybe there's just a flag to set a CSV uh, file name, uh, I would assume that you can though. I don't know off the top of my head. Okay. And while un uh, loading it back into Astra, um, you don't have to specify the CSV. Uh, we just again have to specify the, par the parameter for just the directory. Yeah. Um, okay. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you. Yep. All right. Thanks, Nikita. Thanks for uh, being our uh, test run on YouTube Live too. Thank you for those of you that joined us there. Um, really good, really good discussion and demonstration you had for us. Um, if, are there any um, other questions or uh, is there any other topics you guys would like to touch on? If not, uh, we can probably go ahead and give give everyone about 20 minutes back of their day. I will take that as a no. So we can stop the recording and uh, you can hit the end the stream on YouTube next. I believe